Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to square a complex number. Now, that's not too difficult because it's basically multiplying by itself and we know already how to multiply complex numbers, but we're also going to show you what that means graphically. Remember, a complex number like the number 4 plus 2i can be represented on the real imaginary plane. The real plane is on the x-axis, the imaginary plane is on the y-axis. And so here we can see we're four units away from the origin in the real direction and two units away from the origin in the imaginary direction. Now remember that i is the square root of negative one. So if I take a look at that position of that point on the real imaginary plane, notice I'm four units away here two units away here, so if I want to know the distance from the origin to that point, I use the Pythagorean Theorem. That's then the length of this distance, which is equal to the square root of the sum of the square of the real part and the square of the imaginary part. Now we're talking about the length of the imaginary part. We're not squaring the i, because when we square i, we get negative 1. And so we can see that would be 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 20 squared, which is about 4.472. So that's the length of this line right here. Also, we have the angle here starting from the real axis to that line, that hypotenuse of that triangle here, and that's equal to 26.565 degrees. Now we can find out what that angle is if you know a bit of trigonometry. We take the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. If you've never seen that before, don't worry about it. Just take a word for it that that angle is 26.565 degrees. Now it turns out when we square this number, we end up in a new number. That new number will be along a line where the angle relative to the real axis is now doubled. And the length of the line to that point, the hypotenuse, that new point, is going to be square of the value we had of the original number. So if we double this, number, so we get 2 times theta, which is now going to be equal to 53 point, let's see, about 1, 3 degrees. Then we have a line along this angle like this. And so you can see that this angle right here, from the x-axis to that line, that's now going to be 53.13 degrees, which is double this angle right here. And the length, the point, when we square this number, they'll now be on this line somewhere, and the length will be the square of this. And of course, when we take the square root of 20 and we square it, we get 20. Or, with other words, if we take 4.472, oop, I'm a little ahead of myself here, 2 squared, we also get 20. So if we measure a distance of 20 here, somewhere here will be that point. Now, to show you why that is so, let's go ahead and take this number and square it. So we're going to take the number 4 plus 2i, and we're going to square it. Well, that means that's equal to 4 plus 2i times 4 plus 2i. And so that means when we, when we multiply this together, we get the first term squared, which is 16, twice the product of the 2, that would be 4 times 2i is 8i, times 2 it would be 16i, and the last term squared, which would be plus, well, that would be 4 times i squared. Now remember that i squared is negative 1, so this becomes 16 plus 16i minus 4, which is 12 plus 16i. There we go. So this is the squared value of our original imaginary number. Now notice the distance from the, x, from the origin is 12 in the real direction and 16 in the imaginary direction. So 12 would be right about here. So we go up here and notice, and when we go across, we end up at 16i. So this number right here is 12 plus 16i, which is equal to the number 4 plus 2i quantity squared. Now notice, that is at an angle of 53.13 degrees, which is twice the angle of the original number. And the length of this, well, let's find out what the length of that is. So the length of the squared value of this right here is going to be equal to the square root of the length of the real part plus the length of the imaginary part squared and added together. So this is equal to the square root of the real part, which is 12 squared plus the magnitude of the imaginary part, which is 16 squared. 
which is equal to the square root of, that's 144, that would be 256, that together would be 400, and of course, that would be equal to 20, which is what we're expecting. And so that's the interesting part, when we take an imaginary number and we find it on the real imaginary plane, and then we square that number, the angle of that line that connects the location of that point to the origin, that angle will be doubled, and the length from the origin to the point, that length will be squared, and that will put us at the result, the square of that original imaginary number. Wow, imagine that. Which then of course also means that if we take this number and we take the square root, then we end up over here, which means the angle would be half as big and the length from the origin to where that point is would be the square root of this length. Wow, that's an interesting discovery. And we're going to use that on the next video to figure out what the square root of i is equal to. So stay tuned, we'll have an interesting video for you on the next one.